are not quite in full sun mode just yet, but we are eager to add some color to our yards. We turn to the expert for a few shadier suggestions. Here to tell us about Brunera is gardening guru Cisco Morris. Come on out, Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> Always making a big entrance. I love it. Did I say this correctly? Brunera? Brunera, I, yeah. I have never heard of this before. Tell me what this is. Well, you know, a lot of people know this plant right here. It's forget-me-not. Okay. And there's a reason we call it forget-me-not, because you can't forget this plant because it spreads all over your garden, <laughs> takes over the whole thing. Don't ever plant this, whatever you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but these are relatives, you can see by the flowers, these are close relatives to forget-me-not, but they barely seed at all. They seed around politely, and when you get a seedling, I cut this, I dug this guy out this morning. Yeah. You know, that's the best thing you ever got. You just got a free plant, you know. <laughs> so they're great. They love the shade. Okay. And you know who loves these flowers? Bees see blue before they see any other color. Oh, interesting. So our bees that are in so much trouble, yes. they love it if you plant this in your garden, you know. So, so it's really helping that part of the ecosystem if you plant this really as well. It's really helping the ecosystem. So it's a wonderful, wonderful plant. And I brought a few plants to show these are all shade plants. Okay. So look at the combinations you can make with these. You yeah, know? it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. So uh, this one is called Looking Glass, and that's the one that's seeded around in my garden. So I just went out and dug that out. It took me exactly 12 seconds. So. <laughs> yeah, but you're the expert. It would take most of us at least 15, right? That's true. <laughs> so there's new varieties. This is Jack Frost. It's just lovely, you know, with so much pattern on it. This one's called Diane's Dream. I've never saw that before. I found it at Swanson's Nursery yesterday. So pretty. I almost fainted. <laughs> There was a woman going to grab it, and I swooped in and got it before she could grab it, you know. But did you, you just to throw an that. elbow so that she couldn't get it? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so there's only a couple things you need to know to grow these. So in any shady spot, they'll do great. Okay. They don't want, they could take a lot of drought if they're in heavy shade. But if they're in much sun, then you got to water them. And the worst thing that can happen is if like a seedling comes up in a sunny spot. Oh, really? If you don't m dig it out and move it while it's little, because once they get big, it's a, it's a hard digging job to get these out, right. which I don't like. But uh, so what you want to do is just what I did. This came up in a sunny spot in my garden. So I dug it out. I can move it to the shade, because if you don't, it'll burn up. OK. And it looks so ugly when yeah. that happens. So. So just uh, move them where you want them. Don't let any of them grow up in the sun. If, they're, if they grow right on top of a plant, you know, and it's going to cover it up, then you want to dig that out. I should also say there are a lot of new varieties coming out now. Lane trees is a really good one, too. So. Okay. And so how much maintenance? Like you were saying, if it's not in full shade and there's a drought happening, how often do you need to be watering these guys? I'd say uh, once a month, maybe. Okay. If it's really hot and dry, maybe I'll give it a little extra water, maybe every two weeks. But okay. But these are pretty darn drought tolerant, and uh, so they'll they won't look too good in the winter. They'll kind of die back, but then they'll come back in the spring again and just bloom like crazy That's and just so great. cheer up your garden like mad. So they will just come keep coming back year after year. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, you'll get a few seedlings, but not nothing like this guy. <laughs> Watch out for that guy. <laughs> so forget me not. Don't like be careful. It yeah. can look the same. You have to. The leaves look different, obviously, yeah, but you, you know, have to be super cautious that you're yep. getting the right one. Yeah. If you get the right ones, you're gonna. They're just the coolest thing in your garden you ever saw. So. And any other tips for when you were planting them? So you're gonna look for a shaded spot. Do you need to water them as soon as you put yeah, them in the ground? Water the live and tweet a lot of them when you put them in the ground. Because, <laughs> you know, all plants, they get little air pockets around the roots. And, yeah. and when I plant something like this, I beat the heck out of the roots. Okay. So uh, they don't really like that, but you need to do that because that makes the roots come out. So after you do that, you got to water the live and tweet a lot of them so that they come back and you know, get strong again. It's like me eating Brussels sprouts. You got to do it, you know? I love having you here, and I love that we got not one but two living Tweedles out of you today. Oh, Thank cool you, Cisco. Oh, cool as can be. <laughs>
thanks for all of your advice and stay with us because after the break, historian Felix Banal and what we can do to help our own local landmarks avoid destruction like what happened with Notre Dame. Be back in just a minute. <laughs>